हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद सोसाइटी आर जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग श्रीमद भगवत गीता कॉमेंट्री इज बाय माई वर्शिपफुल गुरु जी स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद जी महाराज नरेटेड बाय माई सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंद सो टूडे वी विल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम चैप्टर नंबर फोर्टीन विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज गुण त्रय विभाग योग थ्री गुणाज थ्री मोड्स ऑफ नेचर एंड वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम श्लोका नंबर सेवनटीन सो गॉड कंटिन्यूज सत्वा संजाते ज्ञानम रजसो लोभ ऐव च प्रमाद मोहौ तमसो अज्ञाने मेव च From sattva proceeds knowledge, from rajas greed, and from tamas heedlessness, delusion, and ignorance. So, as God has been so mercifully explaining to us that this is how the three gunas operate, and by now I think you may have understood why sattva is promoted so much because uh, it also generates knowledge. This is why we say do gyan yagya. like we are doing right now knowledge is light through knowledge we get power we know things that we did not know before so if we are in sattva knowledge is the result and rajas worldly activities increase your greed and uh, worldly desires and tamas uh, increases your delusion and ignorance shloka number 18 urdhvam gachanti sattvastha मध्य राजोगुणवृत्तिस्तथा going north upwards and rajas keeping you horizontal circle of life and death and um, tamas demoting you into lower embodiments etc so therefore while all the three gunas are needed in every individual in everything the how you operate those gunas matters and these gunas by themselves are not good or bad it's how you use them when they are used for promoting just like we said in the previous shloka when you are tired you need rest that tamas is a good tamas when you work for helping others or for earning your honest living those karmas are good karmas that rajas is good rajas and then when you pray and you are meditating and uh, being in a holy mode that sattva is good sattva but when we over exaggerate these gunas and then we get deluded by them that's when they start to uh, take over take control and then they hurt us instead of helping us otherwise gunas the three gunas are should be in harmony next shloka number 19 nanyam gunebhya kartaram yada drishtan upashyati गुणेभ्यश्च परम वेति मद्भावं सोधि गच्छति व्हेन द सीयर डज नॉट सी एनी एजेंट अदर देन द गुणास एंड नोज व्हाट इज बियॉन्ड द गुणास ही अटेन्स माय ट्रांसेंडेंटल बीइंग सो दिस इज द हायर स्टेट एज वी एडवांस इन आवर स्पिरिचुअलिटी इन आवर समाधि इन आवर सिंसियर सेल्फ एफर्ट we and meditate regularly then we understand that these three gunas are um, by themselves coming in and going like waves and then he knows what is beyond the three gunas he transcends the three gunas and enters into the fourth state which is called the transcendental state outside of the three gunas and that is the state where time and space don't exist that is like your deep sleep experience when you are in your deep sleep state there is no ego there are no senses there is no time and space but when you wake up all that comes rushing back because of ignorance and when we 
consciously get to that state while we are aware of it that is called the transcendental state shloka number 20 lord says guna neta nati त्रिंदेहि देह समद्भवान जन्म मृत्यु जरा दुखैर विमुक्तो मृतमश्नुते द इंडिविजुअल सोल हैविंग ट्रांसेंडेड द थ्री गुणस व्हिच गिव्स राइज टू द बॉडी बिकम्स फ्री फ्रॉम बर्थ डेथ ओल्ड एज एंड ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ मिजरी ऑफ लाइफ एंड अटेंस इमोर्टैलिटी so here god is talking about the experience of liberation self realization that state where there is no more birth and death you have transcended and even while alive once you get self realized like our guru ji uh, swami ji uh, that state is known as jeevan mukti you are liberated while you are alive itself and so therefore um, all kinds of practical realities will stay the same you will still look the same you will age the same you will have diseases pain this that and ultimately the body will depart but you have already attained immortality you have already transcended the three gunas so this is a subjective experience um, spirituality liberation all these things cannot be expressed verbally to others that is the main thing but here god is saying that individual soul that has learned how to transcend the three gunas has decoded the mystery of nature he has understood what time is and space is and has gone beyond that state so beautiful shloka now arjuna is asking a question arjuna says arjuna vacha कैर्लिंगस्त्रीन गुणाते नेतानती प्रभो किचार कथम चैता स्त्रीन गुणानतिवर्त श्री अर्जुन एस्ट ओ लॉर्ड वॉट आर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ वन हू हेज ट्रांसेंडेड द थ्री गुणस हाउ डज ही कंडक्ट हिमसेल्फ हाउ डज ही राइज अबव द थ्री गुणस if you remember in chapter number 2 uh, arjuna had asked the same uh, similar question but not the same question in that case he had asked what does a self realized sage do how does he sit how does he walk how does he talk so there god had given him a lot of knowledge that was early in the stage where arjuna was all deluded and god gave him this divine knowledge through as if by giving him cpr he told him the body is um, mortal but the consciousness within you is immortal and then he explained all the traits of how um, advanced sages and saints lead their life and how they achieve that state here this is this question is more pointed since god is talking about the gunas the modes of nature of sattva rajas and tamas he and uh, god has said somebody who transcends it uh, is not born again he attains immortality therefore arjuna is trying to ask how do you get to that state how does he conduct himself who what does that state look like in other words so next shloka number 22 shri bhagavan vacha now god is answering prakasham cha pravrittim cha मोहमेव च पांडव न द्वेष्टि संप्रवृत्ता न निवृत्ता कांक्षति लॉर्ड कृष्ण सेड ही ओ पांडवा अर्जुना हु डज नॉट हेट व्हेन लाइट एक्टिविटी एंड डिल्यूशन आर प्रेजेंट नॉर डज ही लॉन्ग फॉर देम व्हेन दे आर एब्सेंट सो दैट इज दैट स्टेट ऑफ द highly developed sage he does not judge sattva rajas or tamas by their nature he simply looks at them as a witness just like your own consciousness looks at you like a witness next shloka god continues udasina vadasino guneryo na vichalyate guna vartanta ityeva यो सीटेड लाइक वन इनडिफरेंट 
he is not disturbed by the gunas he knows that the gunas alone operate gunas modified into body sense sense objects as they continue to interact among themselves and thus being established in the self he is unmoved so he watches them with great interest and he is aware when his modes are changing when he is in a rajasic mood or a satvic mood or a tamasic mood but since he is no longer a slave to the gunas he is their master he has mastered these gunas they simply become like his pet servants they these senses these gunas so they obey that a person who has transcended the gunas and he looks at them um, with love and they obey his command so this is how he he is indifferent he knows that they are all just like we said you can convert any guna to your benefit gunas are not good or bad they are simply there if you abuse them you deteriorate and if you are helped by them you rise so that is how these sages and saints and people who have transcended these gunas understand them shloka 24 सम दुख सुख स्वस्थ समलोष्टाश्म कांचन तुल्य प्रिया प्रियो धीर स्तुल्य निंदात्म संस्तुति एवर एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन द सेल्फ ही इज लाइक अ लाइक इन प्लेजर एंड पेन ही रिगार्ड्स अ क्लॉड ऑफ अर्थ अ स्टोन एंड अ पीस ऑफ गोल्ड ऑल इक्वल इन वैल्यू he is firm in wisdom and keeps his mind balanced in conditions that are agreeable and disagreeable treating praise and censure alike so very profound shloka now imagine how to reach that state here god is saying he is always within the atma he resides in the self and therefore it doesn't matter whether a painful situation is developing or a pleasurable outcome is coming he knows fully well that play, pain and pleasure are like waves in the ocean they come and go all the time and therefore he looks at all things with equal value like looking at a, a piece of mud from the earth a stone or a piece of gold all equal in value let's think about this a little bit it's not that they are stupid it's not that they are looking at gold and and stone and mud and thinking it's all the same just like when a child is 2 years old he doesn't know the difference the value of gold or the value of cloud he to them it's all the same but when we grow up we give different values the difference here is that the saint is fully aware that the gold is much more expensive than a stone or a piece of mud but he gives it equal value from his inner consciousness knowing fully well that these things cannot create liberation these things cannot solve your problem of repeated embodiments so he knows that these are just rajasic things now having said that he won't throw away the gold he has in his house in the street saying it's same as the stone so we have to understand these scriptures with common sense meaning practical reality doesn't change but like most worldly people who salivate knowing that they can get some gold and because of that they may get into greed lust passion worldly activities the sage simply will not he will leave all that and walk away because he is not attached to them that is what the difference is between Uh, looking at all things alike but if one is not evolved then no matter how many big things he says if he is stuck to money he is stuck to name and fame doesn't matter how much uh, orange you wear how much tikas you put on your head how authentic you look it's an inner journey so therefore all that becomes hypocritical if you are not evolved so therefore arjuna has asked a beautiful question that lord is answering very wonderfully and many people get stuck in this there are many uh, so called spiritual people also who don't understand these things and they get caught in them so uh, such a saint such a yogi transcended somebody who has transcended the gunas he is firm in his wisdom his wisdom is not shaky things cannot shake him uh, a little bit of gold and money does not buy him 
and he stays firm and he keeps his mind balanced in conditions that are agreeable and disagreeable under all circumstances they are always the same they treat praise and censure alike think of socrates for example he was so principled in his beliefs and knowledge and his devotees loved him so much but he was ordered to drink poison the devotee said we have some inner ways to free you and we can um, take you away and you don't have to drink poison we um, we have that ability but socrates said no he says no because i cannot live by myself by running away i want to um, face it boldly and he drank the poison in um, uh, neera ji you will be happy to hear this neera drank poison <laughs> she did um, for krishna and they say she merged into the um, um, idol of krishna itself they say they couldn't find her body anymore she became krishna but that is the conviction that we need um, in the spiritual life and therefore that does happen to uh, to people who are uh, as we can see they have to be highly advanced and evolved in their journey and socrates by him making that decision became perpetually immortal so did neera and anybody who believes in these causes so much it's uh, my satsang went a little bit over apologies for that um, but i hope you enjoyed the discussions and the explanations we will continue uh, from shloka number 25 in tomorrow's um, satsang hari om tat sat